الحمد لله يفعل ما يشاء ويحكم ما يريد وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الحميد المجيد وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الداعي إلى التوحيد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه إلى يوم المزيد أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى Today I want to cover and speak about 20 lessons that we can take from the coronavirus outbreak. In our previous session last week, we spoke about 10 advices in which a person can use to avoid the coronavirus. But today, inshallah ta'ala, I want to speak about ibar wa idat, lessons that we could learn from what we are going through and what we are seeing and how this coronavirus outbreak and this pandemic has become. The virus, coronavirus, is a thing that has truly spread on this earth and it has caused havoc, anarchy and outbreak. People have become distressed and some have even lost loved ones. Everywhere you go, People are speaking about it, they are discussing it. It's been spoken in social media. Some people are speaking about it a lot, and others are speaking about it a little. Some are asking questions, some are answering. It's become the story of the town. It's become the discussion of the city. And what I wanted to do, inshallah ta'ala, is lessons that we can take from it. And I restricted it to 20 lessons, inshallah ta'ala. The believers are ones that do that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He spoke about the believers in the Quran and He said about them, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَعِبْرَةً لِأُولِي الْأَبْصَارِ In all of this, there's a lesson and there's a reminder to who? أُولِي الْأَبْصَارِ Those who have insight, the wise people. The true believers, the smart people, these things become lessons for them. And they take understanding and comprehension from it. وَلِذَلِكَ The noble companion Abu Darda, رضي الله تعالى عنه, he said, تفكر ساعة The thinking of one hour خير من قيام ليلة It is better than standing a night. The tafakkur of a sa'a just think, thinking and pondering and contemplating for an hour, he said it's better and it's greater than praying the night. So we should take these moments and this event that we are going through, lessons and reminders from it. The first, inshallah ta'ala, ibrah that we can take from the coronavirus outbreak is, وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ That's the first lesson that we can take from it. This coronavirus is a true weak creation of Allah. It's extremely weak. It can't even be seen with the eye. If someone wants to see it, you have to use a microscope in order to see it. It is that small, but it placed in the hearts of the people terror and fear. There's a lesson in it. There's a reminder in it. And that is قُدْرَةِ الْرَبِّ عَزَّ وَجَلَ The ability and the strength of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala and how weak the creation are. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala He has the ultimate power and the ultimate strength. The creation, however much we have reached in technology and we've reached in science and in medicine, we are still weak. We are unable till now to produce a vaccine for this virus. This truly shows us that the one who has the ability, the ultimate ability and strength is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَأَنَّ Allah عَزَّ وَجَلَّ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ الْمَتِينَ And that is why Allah said in the ayah مَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِي إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَقَوِيٌّ عَزِيزٌ They have not honoured Allah the way He deserves to be honoured. Inna Allah, verily Allah, laqawiyun, he is one who is strong. 
and has the ultimate strength. And Aziz means Al Ghalibu fi Amrihi. It is the one that when he wants something to happen, it will happen, no matter what everybody says. That's the first lesson that we can take from the coronavirus. It has proven to us how weak we are, and it has proven to us how strong and great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. The second is Fa'atabiru ya ulil abasar. The second lesson that we can take from it is Fa'atabiru ya ulil abasar. That which is embarrassing and shaming, that when calamities befall and hardship comes, that the people busy themselves with transmitting and passing on news and talking about the things that are happening without really looking at and without observing repentance, the recitation of the Qur'an and turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many people are really talking about the statistics and how many people have died. And that doesn't mean that we shouldn't. We shouldn't want to know about that. But they made that the ultimate goal. And they've only busied themselves with that. Without looking at this calamity can be an expiation for your sins and your shortcomings. It requires from you al iman, wal yaqeen, wal sabr, wal thabat. It requires from you faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It requires from you patience and certainty. And it requires from you to be firm and established and upright in your religion. Walidalik. Shaykh al-Allama Abdul Aziz ibn Baz rahimahullah in his Majmu' al-Fatawa he said he said وَإِنَّ مِنْ عَلَامَاتِ قَسْوَةِ الْقُلُوبِ One of the signs that show that a group of people's hearts have become tainted and has truly become filthy is أَنْ يَسْمَعَ النَّاسُ قَوَارِعَ الْآيَاتِ وَزَوَاجِرَ الْعِبَرِ وَالْعِضَاتِ Is that the people they hear of the magnificent Signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those signs that bring about fear, they hear about it, such as the coronavirus. And these things, the mountains will tremble because of it. Of it. But this individual, they are consistent and continuous on their transgression and going against Allah wa ta'ala's command. And they are consistent upon disobeying Allah. Like nothing has happened. They've not taken anything from it. All they do is they transmit the news and what's happening. They give each other updates. And that's it. There's nothing more to it. They are not turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are aqifina ala tiba'i ahwa'ihim. They are consistent and continuous in following their whims and desires. So fa'atabiru ya ulil abasar. This is something that requires from you to turn back to your Lord and to take lessons from it. The third is Allahu khaliqu kulli shay'in. The third lesson that we can take from the coronavirus outbreak is Allahu khaliqu kulli shay'in. Every single thing that's happening in this world and everything that has happened in the world and anything that's going to happen all of them are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah created it subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills and wants, He is able to ala ta'atil al asbab. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, if He wants, He can stop the means taking place. He can allow things that we've exerted all of our efforts into. Allah, if He wishes, and if He wants, He can stop it from happening. We've put all of our efforts in it. The means is there. But he subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want it to happen. He can do that. He can prevent it from happening. Even if the means are in place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he can bring the creation into existence without any tangible means of how this creation came about. Allah khaliqu kulli shay. Allah creates everything subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah created Isa ibn Maryam without a father. وَرَبُّكَ قَادِرٌ Allah also has the ability to prevent things happening 
if he wishes so, subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you look at the mu'jiza of Nabiullah Zakaria, Zakaria had a tongue. When his wife became pregnant, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that Zakaria couldn't speak. قَالَ رَبِّ جَعَلْ لِي آيَةً قَالَ آيَتُكَ أَلَّا تُكَلِّمَ النَّاسَ ثَلَاثَ لَيَالٍ The three days will come and you won't be able to speak. No words will come out of your mouth. Zakaria had a tongue, but his tongue was unable to function. It couldn't work. Who is the one who did that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he creates whatever he wills. So, if we felt this in our hearts, and we truly digested this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, khaliqu kulli shay, that he creates everything. And he is the one who creates the means. And he is the one who creates the musabbibat. And he is the one who creates the nata'ij and the muqaddimat. Wal af'al and the actions, jami'an, all of it. As he says, قُلِ اللَّهُ خَالِقُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ الْوَاحِدُ الْقَحَارُ Say to them, Muhammad, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created everything. The fourth lesson that we take from the corona outbreak is لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَضَرَّعُونَ Hasn't the coronavirus, my beloved brothers and sisters, not shown us how weak we are and how unable we are? Has it not shown us that we are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The answer to that question is, yes it has. It has shown us that we're in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we are unable to do anything. وَلِذَلِكَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Qur'an, فَلَوْلَا إِذْ جَاءَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا تَضَرَّعُوا وَلَكِنْ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, فَلَوْلَا if only إِذْ جَاءَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا when our trial came to them, when the calamity from Allah came to them, if only تَضَرَّعُوا they humbled themselves. They humiliated themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they didn't. وَلَكِنْ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ but rather their heart became tainted and hard. وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ and shaytan beautified for them. مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ that which they were doing. When the calamity of Allah came, Instead of turning to Allah and humbling themselves to Allah, what did they do? They were persistent upon their wrongdoings. وَلِذَلِكَ Ibn Kathir رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ In the tafsir of this ayah, he says, فَهَلَّا If only these people, when we tested them and we put them through trials and tribulations, تَضَرَّعُوا إِلَيْنَا If only they turned towards us. وَتَمَسْكَنُوا إِلَيْنَا And they held on to us. وَلَكِنْ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ But rather their hearts became tainted. أَيْ مَا رَقَّتْ وَلَا خَشَعَتْ Their hearts did not become soft, Ibn Kathirin says. And it never humbled itself to Allah. وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ أَيْ مِنَ الشِّرْكِ وَالْمَعَاصِ The things that shaytan beautified for them was disbelief of Allah and he also beautified for them sins. وَلِذَلِكَ ابْنُ الْقَيِّمٍ He said in his kitab al-wabil al-sayyib He says فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ فَرِلِي اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى لَمْ يَبْتَلِيَهُمْ لَمْ يَبْتَلِيَهُ لِيُهْلِكَهُ وَإِنَّمَ بْتَلَاهُ لِيَمْتَحِنَ صَبْرَهُ وَعُبُودِيَتَهُ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى عَلَى الْعَبْدِ عُبُودِيَّةً فِي الضَّرَّاءِ وَلَهُ وَأَكْثَرُ الْخَلْقِ يُعْطُونَ الْعُبُودِيَةَ فِي مَا يُحِبُّونَ وَالشَّأْنُ فِي إِعْطَاءِ الْعُبُودِيَةِ فِي الْمَكَارِهِ Ibn al-Qayyim says in his kitab al-Wabil al-Sayyib Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He didn't test them And He didn't put them through trials and tribulations So He can destroy them But rather He tested them So He can See Or He could trial and test their patience. The reason why they were, they were put through these calamities was to see where their patience stands. Are they truly patient people? And then Ibn al-Qayyim says, 
Allah has on the slave a servitude at the times of hardship and also servitude at the times of ease and joy. And the majority of the people, they have been given the servitude at the times when they are enjoying themselves and they are happy. But the reality of the matter is وَالشَّأْنُ فِي إِعْطَاءِ الْعُبُودِيَةِ فِي الْمَكَارِ But the true form of servitude is that you are patient and you come with the servitude required at the time of hardship. The times when you have a coronavirus outbreak. Are you going to come with الْعُبُودِيَةِ فِي الْمَكَارِ Number five فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ The fifth lesson that we can take from the corona outbreak is the majority of the people today are deceived. And they are deceived with the little that they do. And they think that they have done an excellent job. But little do they forget the wrong crimes and the mistakes that they have committed. And everything that has befallen us and that we go through is because of our, because of our own actions. It is because of what we have done. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, in the Qur'an, he says, أَوَلَمَّا أَصَابَتْكُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَدْ أَصَبْتُمْ مِثْلَيْهَا قُلْتُمْ أَنَّا هَذَا قُلْ هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ أَنفُسِكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, أَوَلَمَّا أَصَابَتْكُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ When the calamity befell you, and you went through a time of hardship, قَدْ أَصَبْتُمْ مِثْلَيْهَا And the likes of this calamity had befallen on the disbelievers. قُلْتُمْ You said, أَنَّا هَذَا Where did this come from? Why are we going through this? And why is this happening to us? قُلْ Say to them, Muhammad, هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ أَنفُسِكُمْ This has come to you from your own actions. This ayah, it came down in the context of the battle of Uhud. When the Sahabas, they looked at the commander of the battle. It was Nabi Lahi Muhammad. And they were the companions of the Prophet wasallam, the only believers of that day. And they were saying to themselves, how is it that we're going to lose? How has this come to us? Why are we going through this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to them, say to them, Muhammad, huwa min indi anfusikum. This has come to you from your own actions. It is what you have done to yourselves. وَلِذَلِكَ عَبَّاسٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ عَنْهُ The noble companion and the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ, Al-Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib. What did he say? He said, Allahumma innahu lam yanzil bala'an min as-sama'i illa bi dhambin wa la yukshafu illa bi tawbatin. He said, O oh Allah, there has never come a calamity from high above except due to the sins that were committed and it will be in, and it will not be removed and it will not be removed unless we come with the repentance Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah he said in his kitab Sayyid al-Khatir al-musibat al-udma the greatest calamity is rida al-insani and nafsi is for the person to be pleased with himself. وَاقْتِنَاعِهِ بِعِلْمِهِ And for the person to be content with his knowledge. وَهَذِهِ مِحْنَةٌ قَدْ عَمَّتْ أَكْثَرُ الْخَلْقِ And this is a trial and an evil trait that has befallen unto many. That the person believes that he is fine and there's nothing wrong with him. And the person is content with his knowledge and he believes I have what it needs. He says, وَهَذِهِ mihna." This is truly a calamity. The sixth lesson that we can take from the coronavirus outbreak is, Allahu latifun bi'ibadihi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is gentle to His creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is taking care of His believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is protecting them from great harms. The scholars, they said before, 
in order to know good, evil needs to be present. How would you know something is good unless its opposite is present? The believer, when the calamity of the coronavirus occurred, he realizes that which he used to have. Well, the scholars, they said, that health is a crown on the heads of the healthy one. Health is a crown on the heads of the healthy ones, the ones who are not sick. And no one can see that crown except the sick people. They're the only ones who can see it. So the person realizes what he what he's had he understands what he was given and that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him inna allaha Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inna rabbi latifun lima yasha Allah is kind and generous and gentle to whoever he wills subhanahu wa ta'ala Allahu latifun bi'ibadihi bi'ibadihi hiya ahu the slaves who have believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they have stood up for his religion. They did what he told them to do and they stayed away from that which he told them to stay away from. Number seven. Antumul fuqara'u ilallah. You are the ones that are in need of Allah. We are the ones who need Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allah doesn't need us subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the abandoned acts of worship at times of hardship is ubudiyat tadallul the acts of worship which are abandoned and that people leave off at times of hardship is the act of worship of humiliating and humbling yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and turning back to Him and showing that you need Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of us are in need of Him. Let's ponder. Over Zakaria alayhi salam. Nabiullah Zakaria, how he wanted something from Allah. He really wanted to have a child. And so he called on to his Lord. He presented himself in a way that shows that he is in need of Allah. He humiliated himself. He humbled himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, Ala lisani Zakaria, qala rabbi inni wahana al-adhmu minni. He said, My Lord, my bones have become fragile. And my hair has turned white. And I was never one who was transgressive in your supplication and invoking unto you, O oh my Lord. Ibn Rajab, he says in his kitab, Jami' ulum wal hikam. He says, Wa'alam anna su'ala Allahi ta'ala duna khalqihi huwa al muta'ayyanu li anna su'ala fi idharu dhulli min as sa'ili wal maskanati wal hajati wal iftikar wa fihi wa fi li itirafu bi kudrati al mas'uli ala def'i hadha al dharari wa nayli al matlubi wa jalbi al manafi'i wa dar'i al madari. وَلَا يَصْلُحُ الذُّلُّ وَالْإِفْتِقَارُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ وَحْدَهِ لِأَنَّهُ حَقِيقَةُ الْعِبَادَةِ He says, know that asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, calling unto Him alone, it is an obligatory act. And asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and begging Him is the true sign of humbling yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Raising your hand and begging him. It is Idharu Dhulli. You are presenting yourself and you are showing yourself as to be someone who's humble and is in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's also in it is اعتراف بقدرة المسؤول that you're recognizing that the one you are begging and you're asking from Allah, he has the ultimate strength and that he has the ability over everything. He is the one who can remove this harm from you. He is the one who can give you what you're looking for. He can bring about the good that you want. He is the one who can repel the harm from you. And all of this 
it comes through supplicating and invoking onto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number eight. إِنَّمَا أَشْكُوا بَثِّي وَحُزْنِي إِلَى اللَّهِ The eighth lesson that we take from the coronavirus outbreak is we complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The complaining are two types. It is to complain to Al-Khaliq, Allah Azza wa Jalla. And the second one is to create, uh, to complain to the makhluq, the creation. To complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not go against patience. To complain to Allah does not go against patience. But complaining to the creation goes against, goes against the true meaning of patience. وَلِذَلِكَ Ya'qub alayhi alayhi salam when he said qala inma ashku bathi wa huzni ila allah wa a'lamu min allah ma la ta'lamun he was upon patience he said i'm going to complain to my lord about my situation and i'm going to tell him what i am going through and the hardship that i am enduring ولذلك the poet he said وَإِذَا عَرَتْكَ بَلِيَّةٌ فَاصْبِرْ لَهَا If calamity and hardship makes its way to you, be patient. صَبْرَ الْكَرِيمِ فَإِنَّهُ بِكَ أَعْلَمُ Be patient, the patience of the generous one. فَإِنَّهُ بِكَ أَعْلَمُ Allah is the one who knows your situation. وَإِذَا شَكَوْتَ إِلَى ابْنَ آدَمَ إِنَّمَا And if you go and you complain to the creation, and you tell them your problem, then you are complaining to Tashku Tashku Rahima ila Ladi la Yarhamu. You are complaining about the merciful one, Allah, and you are complaining to the one who has no mercy. Wa ida aratka beliyatun fasbir laha, sabra al kari mifa inno bika alamu, wa ida shakota ilabna adama inama, tashku rahima ila ladi la yarhamu. Complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and beg him and tell him your situation. Number nine, the ninth lesson that we take from the corona outbreak is وَكُلُّ أَمْرٍ مُسْتَقِرٍ Every single thing, my beloved brothers and sisters, has an appointed time. It will never forever remain. It won't just carry on forever. وَلِذَلِكَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says لِكُلِّ نَبَئٍ Mustaqar. Every thing has an ending point. وَلِذَلِكَ سَعْدِيُّ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ He says, أَيْ وَقْتٌ يَسْتَقِرُّ فِيهِ لِكُلِّ نَبَئٍ مُسْتَقَرْ It means, أَيْ وَقْتٌ يَسْتَقِرُّ فِيهِ وَزَمَانٌ لَا يَتَقَدَّمُ عَنْهُ وَلَا يَتَأَخَرْ Everything has an appointed time for it. It won't go before that time and it won't go after that time. Allah also says in another ayah, لِكُلِّ أَجَلٍ كِتَابٍ Every single thing has a time written for it. And it will not go beyond it. The coronavirus to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it has an appointed time. Only Allah knows when it will come to an end. But there is an appointed time for it. We need to believe in that. That it won't forever carry on. They have come plagues and viruses previously before. It has come before and they have come to an end. And it's always going to be like that. Number 10, فَصَبُرٌ Jamil. Patience. Patience is what is required from us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the 10th lesson that we take from the coronavirus outbreak. فَصَبْرٌ جميل. Patience. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us in the Qur'an to be patient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, فَصْبِرْ صَبْرًا جَمِيلًا Be patient. A beautiful patient. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, عَلَى لِسَانِ يَعْقُوبَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is telling us this, بعد توالي المصائب, after the calamities, one after the other, happened to Ya'qub alayhi salam, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us that Ya'qub said, فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ وَاللَّهُ الْمُسْتَعَانُ عَلَى مَا تَصِفُونَ He said, a beautiful patience. وَلِذَلِكَ حَافِظُ بْنَ حَجَرٍ In his kitab, Fathul Bariyu, he said, الصَّبْرُ عَلَى بَلَايَ الدُّنْيَا يُورِثُ الْجَنَّةِ Patience on the calamities of this earth will inherit you Jannah. Through it, you will get Jannah. The 11th, the 11th lesson that we take from the coronavirus outbreak is وَلَا تَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ Don't give up. Do not lose فُقْدَانُ الْأَمَلِ Don't lose hope. And don't think to yourself that it's over and it's done. The world has come to an end and everything is going to be destroyed and my life is over. Do not think of it like that. فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى After every hardship, there's ease. وَلَا يَغْلِبُ عُسْرٌ يُسْرَيْنِ Remember that after every hardship, there's ease. كُلَّمَا ضَاقَ الْأَمْرُ التَّسَعَ Every time something becomes tight, it's close to its opening. It's close to the opening time. And if we look at again the story of Ya'qub alayhi salam, how he combined between beautiful patience and al-amal wa tafa'ul, how he had hope. He never lost hope. Nabiullah Ya'qub. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told us. And he also came with akhdu al-asbab al-mumkina. Ya'qub alayhi salam was patient. He also hoped good of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And he was also coming with the means. Allah told us in the Quran that he said to his children, وَقَالَ يَا بَنِيَّ لَا تَدْخُلُوا مِن بَابٍ وَاحِدٍ وَدْخُلُوا مِن أَبْوَابٍ مُتَفَرِّقَةٍ My sons, don't enter all from one door, but enter from different doors. That was him taking the means to protect his children from harm. Also, how... He had strong tawakkul in Allah Azza wa Jalla. He said to his children, after he told them to take the means, he said to them, وَمَا أُغْنِي عَنْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ I cannot prevent you from the qadr when it comes. If the qadr comes, there's nothing I can do for you. إِذَا جَاءَ الْقَدَرُ بَطَلَ الْحَذَرُ if the qadr comes, all of the precautions that you're taking, it will all go out of the window. وَمَا أُغْنِي عَنْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ I cannot suffice you. وَمَا أُغْنِي عَنْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ I cannot suffice you anything from Allah. إِنِ الْحُكْمُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ All matters are in the hands of Allah. He is the one who controls it. عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ On Allah alone do I rely. وَعَلَيْهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُتَوَكِّلُونَ also, he never gave up. Nabi Allah Ya'qub. He had hope. Even after everything happened to him, he had hope in Allah Azza wa Jalla. And that is why he kept saying to his children, Ya Bani Yadhabu Fatahasasu mi Yusuf wa Akhihi, Wala Tayasu mi Rawhilla, Inna Ula Yayasu mi Rawhillahi, Illa al Qumul Kafirun. He said to his children, Go. فَتَحَسَّسُوا And look for me Yusuf, look for my son Yusuf. وَأَخِيهِ And go look for his brother Bilyamin. Go look for them. وَلَا تَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ And don't give up. إِنَّ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ إِنَّهُ لَا يَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُونَ There is no one who gives up on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except that he's from the disbelievers. And our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to nurture, he would teach his companions these meaning, which is not to give up, to have faith in Allah Azza wa Jalla. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said in a hadith, Al-Imam Al-Bukhari and Muslim both narrated, La adwa wa la tiyarata wa yu'jibun al-fa'lu qalu wa ma al-fa'lu qala kalimatun tayyibah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, wa yu'jibuni al-fa'lu. Fa'lu 
used to amaze me. It fascinates me. And the Sahabas, they said, what is fa'lu? And they, the Prophet said, kalimatun tayyibah, good words. At a time like this, when the people are actually scared and they're frightened, it is not wise to tell the people things that are going to scare them even more. Number 12. The 12th lesson that we take from the corona outbreak is وَكَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يُوقِنُونَ الثِّقَةُ بِاللَّهِ Having strong belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and relying on Him and putting your affairs in His hands. This is one of the greatest ways that we can be go beyond and surpass this moment that we're living in right now. وَلِذَلِكَ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it was little that the Prophet stood up from a place except that he would make the following dua and he would say And certainty certainty that will lessen in our eyes masaiba dunya the calamities of this earth yani certainty it makes the masaib seem insignificant and very little. It does. وَلِذَلِكَ The person will only suffer if he becomes a person who lacks yaqeen, certainty. Abdullah ibn Mas'udin, رضي الله تعالى عنه, he said, إِنَّ الرَّوْحَ وَالْفَرَجَ فِي الْيَقِينِ وَالْرِضَى وَإِنَّ الْغَمَّ وَالْحُزْنَ مِنَ الشَّكِّ وَالصُّخْطِ Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and he said that ease and victory is in certainty and a rida submission. To be pleased with whatever Allah has created for you, for you subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِنَّ الْغَمَّ وَالْحُزْنَ Depression, anxiety and stress is connected to what? Min shakki when a person is in a state of doubt. Was and when a person is in a state of anger. He doesn't like the qadr. He's not pleased with what Allah has destined for him. He doesn't like it. Also, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said, Wal yaqeenul imanu kulluh. Certainty is all of iman. Sufyan al thawriyu he said, as Abu Nu'aym al-Asfahani al narrated in his kitab Hilyatul Awliya wa Tabaqatul Asfiya that he said Al-Yaqeenu What does Al-Yaqeenu mean? Alla tattahima mawlaka fi kulli ma asabak Al-Yaqeenu means that you don't suspect your Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every calamity that befall you or Allah did, this, Allah did this to us Allah has made this happen to us that you don't always suspect him and think evil and bad of him but rather, you are certain in the good that will come out of it. Ibn al-Qayyim said something very powerful. He said, فَالْيَقِينُ رُوحُ أَعْمَالِ الْقُلُوبِ أَلَّتِي هِيَ أَرْوَاحُ أَعْمَالِ الْجَوَارِحِ وَهُوَ حَقِيقَةُ الصِّدِّيقِيَّةِ وَهُوَ قُطْبُ هَذَا الشَّأْنِ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِ مَدَارُهُ The real soul of the heart is certainty, which then manifests on the limbs. It is certainty. When a person has a certainty in something, he can do it easily. Because the heart is content. It's in a state of tranquility. And the level of the siddiqiyya, the true essence of it is al yaqeen. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ أَئِمَّةِ يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا لَمَّا صَبَرُوا وَكَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يُوقِنُونَ that we made them leaders. We put them in position of leadership when they came with two things. Bisabri wal yaqeen tunalu al imamata fi deen. Patience and certainty brings about leadership. Number 13. Khudu hidrakum. The 13th lesson that we can take, inshaAllah ta'ala, from the corona virus outbreak is. Take your precautions. Al-akhdu bil-asbab al-madiyya. Al-mashru'a. 
Al-Mumkina Min Sunan Illahi Al-Kawniya Taking The Physical Means That are legislated And are permitted Are from the universal signs of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Taking medications Vaccination Staying away from someone who's got the virus These are what falls under the ayah Khudu hidrakum Take your precautions Brothers and sisters What does tawakkul mean? What does haqiqatu tawakkul mean? Tawakkul means I'timadu al-qalbi ala Allah Ma'a mubasharati al-asbab Tawakkul is You rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And you come with the means You come with the means Relying on Allah and coming with the means is what tawakkul is. Ibn al Qayyim says in his kitab Madaru al Salikin, Fatawakul min a'adha a'adha min a'adha min asbab in letti yahsulu bihal al matlubu, wa yen defi'u bihal makruhu, faman ankara al asbab alam yestaki minhu tawakul, wa lakin min tamami tawakul, adam al rukuni il al asbabi, wa kata'a, wa kata'i alaka til kalbi biha. فَيَكُونُ حَالُ قَلْبِهِ قِيَامَهُ بِاللَّهِ لَا بِهَا وَحَالُ بَدَنِهِ قِيَامَهُ بِهَا Ibn al-Qayyim speaks about the two that I just mentioned. That the tawakkul's true essence and the true meaning of a tawakkul is when you rely on Allah and you also come with the means. And Ibn Taymiyyah said something similar to that in his kitab At-Tuhfatu al-Iraqiyya. Ibn Taymiyyah said Al-iltifatu ila al-asbabi shirkun fi al-tawheed ومحو الأسباب أن تكون أن تكون أسباب أسبابا نقص في نقص في العقل والإعراض عن الأسباب بالكلية قدح في الشرع وإنما التوكل المأمور وإنما التوكل المأمور به ما يجتمع فيه مقتضى التوحيد والعقل والشرع ابن تيمية told us رحمه الله something very powerful which is turning away from the means is slandering the religion. When a person says, I don't want to come with the means, I'm going to rely on Allah. You're actually slandering the religion. And it's also, it's an illogical absurdity. And also, sufficing yourself with the means and not relying on Allah is what? Naqdul lit-tawheedi. It is nullifying one's tawheed. وَشِرْكٌ فِي الْأَسْبَابِ And it is what? Shirk in the means. Number 14. The 14th lesson that we take from the coronavirus outbreak is وَاللَّهُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who's going to remain. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best. There's no one greater than Him. But what really is sad when you look at the world today and you observe what is taking place, you come to realize that the people, the minute this coronavirus outbreak happened, this epidemic, a lot of people, they took all of the precautions, they took this very serious, they really did what was required from them. Many people have, as you can see, if you go to uh, countries, They've, they've done lockdowns in their country. People can't go out. People have been isolated in their houses, quarantined. People are prevented from traveling in and out the country. But the same hasn't been taken for the religion. The deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been disrespected and it's been wronged and it's been abused by people. And no one really gave much importance to it. This reminds me of what I once read in the kitab Ihya Ulumuddin by Abi Hamid al-Ghazali. Abi Hamid al-Ghazali mentions in his kitab Ihya Ulumuddin that Hatim al-Asam, he said, فَاتَتْنِ الصَّلَاةُ فِي الْجَمَاعَةِ Salah, he missed the jama'ah in the masjid. He didn't participate in the congregation. I missed the jama'ah, he said. فَعَزَّانِي أَبُوْ إِسْحَاقَ الْبُخَارِي Abu Ishaq al-Bukhari came to me and he came to give me aza. Aza means when you lost a loved one. He came to my house as though I lost a loved one. 
I missed one jama'ah. Abu Ishaq al-Bukhari was the only person who came to me. وَلَوْ مَا تَلِي وَلَدٌ But if I was to lose one child, he's saying Hatim al-Asam. If I was to lose one child, لَعَزَّانِي أَكْثَرَ مِنْ عَشْرِ عشر آلَافٍ More than 10,000 people will come and they would give me uh, their aza, meaning they would show and express their sadness of the loss of my child and they would give me, they would come over to my house to give me kind words to reassure me of khair and good. 10,000 people would do it. But the only person who came to me when I missed the jama'ah was Abu Ishaq al-Bukhari. And look what he said, Hatim al-Asam after that. لِأَنَّ مُصِيبَةِ الدِّينِ أَهْوَنُ عِنْدَ النَّاسِ مِنْ مُصِيبَةِ الدُّنْيَا Because the calamity that happens in the religion is insignificant to the people in comparison to the calamity of, the, of worldly issues. So what I can say here is, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, وَلَا تَجْعَلْ مُصِيبَتَنَا فِي دِينِنَا وَلَا تَجْعَلِ الدُّنْيَا أَكْبَرَ هَمِّنَا وَلَا مَبَلَغَ عِلْمِنَا Number 15. The 15th lesson that we take from the coronavirus outbreak is, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ You may dislike something, and in it for you is good. You may not like something, but in it might be good. ولذلك, the Prophet وسلم, he told us in the famous hadith, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ المؤمن إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ خَيْرٌ وليس ذاك لأحد إلا للمؤمن إن أصابته صراء شكر فكان خيرا له وإن أصابته ضراء صبر فكان خيرا له Fascination and wonder is in the affairs of the believer All of the affairs of the believer is good And this is for no one else except the believer the Prophet said If he is going through a times of joy he shows gratitude and if he is going through times of hardship, he shows patience. And this is good for him. Both situations are good for him. Al-Imam Al-Khatib Al-Baghdadi mentioned in his tariq that Al-Fadl ibn Sahlin, he became sick in Khurasan. He became ill. And then he became better. فجلس للناس So he came out for the people. And they came to greet him, and they came to say to, the, say to him that may Allah give you cure and quick recovery. When they all finished what they wanted to say to him, he stood up and he said to them, Inna fil ilali, verily in the illnesses are laniaman yambari lil uqalai ayya Verily in the illnesses are benefits that the wise people should try to take from. It's an expiator for the sins. sabr, And it allows a person to come with the uh, servitude of patience. And it awakens a person from the heedlessness that he was in. And it allows the person to truly understand the blessings that he had when he was healthy. And it also calls for repentance. And it also encourages a person to do sadaqah. So he understood. شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ You may dislike something, but in it is good for you. Number 16. The 16th lesson that we take from the coronavirus outbreak is فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ Verily, Allah wa ta'ala is close. Brothers and sisters, الدَّعْوَةُ الصَّادِقَةِ A true supplication تُفْتَحُ لَهَا أَبْوَابُ السَّمَاءِ The doors of the sama is open for it. وَلِذَلِكَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Qur'an, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي If my slave asks me, عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I am close. أُجِيبُ I accept دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ The dua of the one who is supplicating. I accept his dua. 
إِذَا دَعَانِ When he supplicates to me. Hassan al-Basri, he says, وَمِفْتَاحُ السَّمَاءِ الدُّعَى The keys of the sky, meaning what opens the doors of the sky. Every house has a key that opens the front door. The doors that open the sama is a dua. Anas ibn Malik, he said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَيَمْتَحِنُ قَلْبَ الْعَبْدِ بِالدُّعَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tests a person's heart with supplication. Wahm ibn Munabbihin, he said, يَنزِلُ الْبَلَاءُ فَيُسْتَخْرَجُ بِهِ الدُّعَاءُ Calamities come and dua comes about to rectify that situation, to make that situation a better situation. وَلِذَلِكَ الْإِمَامُ الْبُخَارِي رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ إِنِي صَحِيحِ he chapted Babu Addu'ai bi raf'il waba'i wal waja'i The chapter Supplication To remove Plagues Viruses Illnesses And poverty Also Imam al-Nasai In his Sunan al-Kubra He chapted Babu Addu'ai bi naqlil waba'i Supplication To remove Calamities To remove Viruses and plagues. And ولذلك ابن حجر in فتح الباري he says علاج الأمراض كلها بالدعاء والالتجاء إلى الله أنجح وأنفع من العلاج بالعقاقير وأن تأثير ذلك وانفعال البدن عنه أعظم من تأثير الأدوية البدنية. ولكن إنما ينجع بأمرين. ولكن إنما ينجع بأمرين أحدهما من جهة العليل وهو صدق القصد والآخر من جهة المداوي وهو قوة توجهه وقوة قلبه بالتقوى والتوكل والله أعلم ابن حجر رحمه الله he mentions that the dua is more stronger than the medicine that one takes and that it has a greater effect than any medicine a person can take but he then mentioned there are two things in which are required in order for the dua to be very effective. The first one is min jihatil alili wa huwa sidqul qasdi that the person has a true sincere intention in their supplication. Wal akharu min jihatul mudawi. So that's from the, that is from the angle of the person who is sick. And from the angle of the person who is curing, if it's going to be, if it's going to work, is قُوَّةُ تَوَجُّهِهِ وَقُوَّةُ قَلْبِهِ بِالتَّقْوَى وَالتَّوَكُلِ The doctor and the medicine, the one who's given the medicine, if he has strong faith in Allah and he has taqwa, then it will work. Some people, they make dua and it doesn't work. And they make it again, it doesn't work and they leave it. Ibn al-Qayyim, he says in his kitab al wa al-Dawa, which is also known as al-Jawab al-Kafi, he says, وَمِنْ أَنْفَعِ الْأَدْوِيَةِ One of the greatest forms of dua is al-ilhahu fi dua It is to be persistent in your dua. Number 18, إِنَّمَا هَذِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا مَتَاعَ The 18th lesson, sorry, the 17th lesson that we take from the coronavirus outbreak is that this dunya, my beloved brothers and sisters, is a very short period of time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, أَفَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ مَتَّعْنَاهُمْ سِنِينَ ثُمَّ جَاءَهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يُعَدُونَ مَا أَغْنَى عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يُمَتَّعُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, أَفَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ مَتَّعْنَاهُمْ سِنِينَ Do you see Muhammad? If we give them a short period of time to enjoy themselves. And then it comes to them that which has been written for them. That which has been promised for them has come, uh, comes their way. That which they were enjoying in this dunya will not suffice them from that which has been promised for them. Let's look at what the Prophet said about this dunya. The Prophet وسلم, he said, as Imam Muslim narrated in his Sahih, والله ما الدنيا في الآخرة إلا مثل ما يجعل أحدكم إصبعه هذه وأشار بالسبابة في اليم فلينظر بما ترجع. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Wallahi, 
And the Prophet Sallallahu we already believe what he says. Imagine if the Prophet said, Wallahi. The Prophet said, Wallahi, my dunya, this dunya is not in accordance to the akhirah, except like a man or a woman who takes their finger, their index finger, and they place it inside the ocean. Let them look at what comes back. وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ This dunya is a deception. It isn't what you think of it. Al-Imam Ahmed in his kitab Al-Zuhud, he brought a statement of Isa ibn Maryam. That Isa ibn Maryam, and he said, بِحَقٍ أَقُولُ لَكُمْ Truthfully, I will say to you guys, إِنَّ أَشَدَّكُمْ حُبًّا لِلدُّنْيَا أَشَدُّكُمْ جَزْعًا عَلَى الْمُصِيبَةِ The ones from amongst you who loves the dunya the most is, uh, 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 أَشَدُّكُمْ جَزْعًا عَلَى الْمُصِيبَةِ It is the ones from amongst you who whenever calamities come, they become shaky and they fall straight away. Number 18. لَا يَبْغُونَ عَنْهَا حِوَلًا the 18th lesson that we take from the coronavirus outbreak is that this world, we are going to always toss between as-sarra'i wa darra times of good and times of hardship. وَبَيْنَ النَّعْمَاءِ وَالْبَأْسَاءِ times of good and times of hardship. بَيْنَ الْعَافِيَةِ وَالْبَلَاءِ we're always going to go through that. It is Jannah only where there's only one situation, and that is good. And it's also the Nar where there's only one situation, which is bad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Khalidina fiha. He says about the people of Jannah, to Ahlul Jannah, Khalidina fiha la yabuguna anha hiwala. They are going to stay in Jannah forever. لا يبغون, they do not want anha hiwalan. They do not want anything to change in their affairs. Mutarrif ibn Shakirin he said, In هَذَا الْمَوْتَ قَدْ أَفْسَدَ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِ النَّعِيمِ نَعِيمَهُمْ فَاطْلُبُوا نَعِيمًا لَا مَوْتَ فِيهِ Death has busied and is corrupted and it's taken away from the people who wanted to enjoy their enjoying. Death has taken away the joy from us. مَا ذُكِرَ فِي مَوْضِعٍ إِلَّا ضَيَّقَهُ Death is never mentioned in a place except that the people start becoming uncomfortable. It corrupts the people's blessings. مُطَرِّف ibn Shakirin then said فَطُلُوبُوا نَعِيمًا لَا مَوْتَ فِيهِ Hope and work for, seek a place where its blessing has no ending. There is no death to it. Number 19. The 19th lesson that we take from the coronavirus outbreak is وَخَافُونِ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you're true believers. The coronavirus, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sent it. And it is what? It is مِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ الْكَوْنِيَّةِ It's from the universal signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الَّتِي يُخَوِّفُ اللَّهُ بِهِ عِبَادَةِ It is Allah placing in our hearts fear to turn back to Him. That's why Allah said in the Qur'an, وَمَا نُرْسِلُ بِالْآيَاتِ إِلَّا تَخْوِيفًا We don't send these universal signs except to make you scared. Scared of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so that you run to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Kathirin he brought the statement of Qatada when it came to the ayah, وَمَا نُرْسِلُ بِالْآيَاتِ إِلَّا تَخْوِيفًا He said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَوَّفَ النَّاسَ بِمَا يَشَاءُ مِنْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَعْتَبِرُونَ وَيَذَّكَّرُونَ وَيَرْجِعُونَ He said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَوَّفَ النَّاسَ Verily Allah, He has placed fear in the people's hearts بِمَا يَشَاءُ مِنْ آيَاتِهِ From whatever of His universal signs Allah wants. لَعَلَّهُمْ And the purpose and the wisdom behind this is لَعَلَّهُمْ يَعْتَبِرُونَ So they can take ibrah, lessons from it. وَيَذَّكَّرُونَ And they can take a reminder from this. وَيَرْجِعُونَ And they can return back to their Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anas ibn Malikin, he said, 
as Al Imam Al Bukhari narrated in his Sahih, كانت الريح الشديدة إذا هبت عرف ذلك في وجه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. That if the wind was strong, إذا هبت عرف ذلك في وجه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. If the wind was very strong, the face of the Prophet would change and he would be scared. As some of the narrations mentioned, he will go into his house and he would walk out and he would walk into the other's room. He would walk around and he would recite the ayah. فَلَمَّا رَأُوهُ عَارِضًا مُسْتَقْبِلَ أُوْدِيَتِهِمْ قَالُوا هَذَا عَارِضٌ مُمْطِرُنَا بَلْ هُوَ مَسْتَعْجَلْتُمْ بِهِ رِيحٌ فِيهَا عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ From the universal signs, Allah destroyed nations. What destroyed the people of Nuh? Is it not rain? From the universal signs of Allah. Allah destroyed a nation with wind. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the universal signs... And these calamities that we see that are happening, these catastrophes, and these viruses are We should be scared of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Last but not least, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ The last and final lesson that we take from the coronavirus is الْوَقْتُ هُوَ مَادَّةُ الْحَيَةِ that the true essence of each and every one of us is time. We are nothing except time that came together. We are time that has come together. We need to honor time and value time. Especially now that we are isolated and we're all at home. We're working from home. We are not uh, going to work. We're not going to school or universities. It's a moment to contemplate and it's a moment to Connect ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. نِعْمَتَانِ مَغْبُونُ فِيهِمَا كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ الصِّحَّةُ وَالْفَرَاقِ Two blessings, many people don't realize its value and how great it is. The first of them is health and the second one is time. This moment that the coronavirus is out there, it's killing people. It's taking lives of loved ones. We need to remember the health that we have Those of us who are not, not afflicted And the free time that we have now We're at home doing nothing It's a time we bond ourselves with the Quran And we memorize it And we study it And we learn it It's a time when our tongues Do not become dry from the remembrance of Allah Al-Allama Muhammad al-Amin al-Shanqitiyu said فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ He said حَلٌ لِمُشْكِلَةِ الْفَرَاغِ أَلَّتِي شَغَلَتِ الْعَالَمِ حَيْثُ لَمْ تَتْرُكْ لِلْمُسْلِمِ فَرَاغًا فِي وَقْتِهِ لِأَنَّهُ إِمَّا فِي عَمَلٍ لِلْدُّنْيَا وَإِمَّا فِي عَمَلٍ لِلْآخِرَةِ He said, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ is a solution for the problem of free time that has busied many people. This dunya has busied many people. You're either busy running after your worldly affairs or you're running after your akhara affairs. Abdullah ibn Mas'udin said something very powerful. He said, Inni I la I dislike a man and arahu farigan for me to see him free. Laysa fi shay'in min amali dunya wala amali al akhirah. He is not doing any actions of the dunya, nor is he doing any actions of the hereafter. It's just sitting somewhere. I hate to see this Abdullah ibn Mas'udin is saying. Walidharika, it was transmitted from Jamaluddin al-Qasimi. Rahimahullah, it was said about him. He saw a group of people playing. And he looked at them and he observed them and he said, I wish time was something that could be bought and sold. I would have bought it from these people. I mean, my time is so tight and these people have so much time, extra time to play. My beloved brothers and sisters, now that you're isolated, now that you, the quarantine has been done, benefit from your time by connecting yourself to Allah, praying many sunan and begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this epidemic to come to an end. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrected from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. 
Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa tuwilik.